Yeah, um, you know, really proud of uh, the way that this team responded to adversity coming off of a, a tough loss up in Ann Arbor a week ago, and it's always interesting, you know, early in the year when you come off a first loss to see how guys, these guys will respond, which I expected them to respond the way they did today because that's just who this team is starting to become. And, uh, really excited. If you look at the way the second half played out, you know, our defense gave up, I think, 75 yards, no points. To me, this is the third game in a row where our defensive staff, led by Coach Williams, has done a tremendous job of making the necessary adjustments at the half and, and coming out and playing really good defense for some. Um, you know, Big Ten wins are special. Um, they're hard, and we knew we'd see uh, Michigan State's best. Obviously, this was a team that uh, struggled the last couple of weeks and, and came in with their backs against the wall and really, uh, really fought us, you know, at least early first half and, and kept themselves in the game. But I thought our guys were ready for that challenge and to match a team that was coming in uh, desperate like Michigan State was. And all it's done is earn us an opportunity uh, to come back in after celebrating this for 24 hours to get ready for a really good Purdue team that's coming off of a big win against Minnesota. So uh, very little time to celebrate it. I am proud of the team and the way we responded uh, and, and played here at home. And hopefully, you know, we can kind of pack the shell and get some butts and seats next week, early kickoff for Purdue. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions. My first two possessions for the offense, you guys reached the end zone. What were you hoping to take advantage of early on and, and how uh, it, it felt like the game was moving slow for Talia, meaning that he was a step ahead of everybody in that pocket? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll take my hat off to that kid. Um, you guys have no idea what the last 24 to 48 hours has been like for him. And for him to be able to compartmentalize and get himself ready to play. And I'm sure he'll be in here pissed off and disappointed. He throws for 300 yards, 24, or whatever, 31. Uh, and, and obviously the injury to his brother was heavy on his mind. And uh, we, we did a good job of surrounding him. But I really liked the way that he was able to kind of compartmentalize and lean on his brothers. And that's what the culture we've tried to create for him. Um, to start fast, that was part of our goal. Um, you know, when a team comes in like Michigan State, who, you know, were basically circling the wagons, uh, we knew we needed to start fast to kind of take the air out of them. And, and I like the way we responded on offense. You know, unfortunately, defensively, we allowed them to go down and answer. So um, really proud of Leah. In the way he responded, especially having a, a long week there at the end of the week. Uh, Antoine Milton had a big day today. Uh, can you speak as to what makes him such a unique, uniquely difficult matchup for uh, well, I think it starts with his size and power. Um, you know, obviously, minus the, the four cracks we had at the one yard line after the long run, Antoine has played really good football for us, and he kind of had the hot, hot hand today. And, you know, we left him in there and fed him. And, 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 a big body guy like that, uh, he wears down defenses and eventually, you know, something's going to pop. He brings something to the team in the passing game, caught a few balls, and then also has really improved in his pass protection. So, you know, between him and Roman Hemby and Kobe McDonald, as well as the freshman uh, Ramon Brown, we really feel like that room has done a tremendous job contributing. Um, Coach, you mentioned overcoming adversity. How the, the flag at the end of the first half is a really Yeah, I'm not going to go down that uh, rabbit hole about that flag and the, the lack of a touchdown. But um, again, we always talk about controlling the things we can control. And we can't control the referees. We can't control the calls. Um, at some point, I think we'll earn the respect around here to where we are able to take advantage of calls like that. And um, all we can do is worry about the, us. And I was glad our defense, unlike me, I had to coach myself to getting re-neutralized and going back to neutral to let that one go. That one sat for a while, but was really happy that defensively they kept fighting, uh, blocked the field goal, which kept points off the board, which was huge. Coach, um, oh, I didn't know what you going to say. Um, going back to Talia with Tua, I mean, was there any question as to whether he would even be able to play today with, I can imagine like where his mental headspace was and on that note, does it make it even more impressive that he was even able to go out there and perform the way he did? You know, obviously with my um, background with that family, I mean, those boys are warriors and they 
they like to play the game of football. You know, I can tell you that it was definitely uh, heavy on the mind of him and um, the relationship he and Tua has, they're really, really close. You know, I think the one thing that was able to settle him down was, you know, he was finally able to get a FaceTime with Tua. Um, and, and Tua basically said, hey, I'm fine, man, go play. I'm looking forward to seeing you go play and win a game. So um, right after dinner last night was the first time in probably 24 hours that I saw his energy because, you know, our team takes on the personality of, of the head coach and the quarterback, and everybody was really kind of on pins and needles watching him as he worked through it Friday, which is a big mental day for us. And we all knew that, you know, he was not – necessarily all the way there, but I thought, you know, once he had the conversation and saw that his brother was okay, thank God for FaceTime now, because uh, Tua was obviously able to get him settled down. Uh, he was able to compartmentalize today and just really focus on doing his job. And, and I thought the kids showed up and played well. Hey coach, um, probably not the best uh, time to ask this, but uh, what did you see from them? Did you make any adjustments? So I think the, the adjustments is as you figure out the chess match of how they want to attack us, you know, the disappointing thing in the first drive was it was almost a mimicking of what happened a week ago, a short yardage play. They ran tempo, the back came downhill, bounced it, and, and, and we didn't have a guy where he needed to be. But I think the best thing about it is Coach Williams, the defensive staff uh, at halftime, you know, they wanted to attack us on the, uh, in the flat area. We made some adjustments from playing the one high look to getting into some cloud looks, cover two looks, which took away the flats. I thought we started pushing the pocket in the quarterback's lap you know, a few times. And, you know, I thought for the most part, our coverage was really good, uh, you know, compared to how we've done things here the last couple of weeks. Hey coach, uh, talk about your offense last week, you turned the ball over three times in, in Michigan this week. The I want to say perfect, you know, no turnovers, no fumbles. I mean, what you guys do this week to control that so you don't have a uh, – I'll put an asterisk by the three turnovers a week ago. I'll put an asterisk by that. Um, but obviously taking care of the football is priority number one for us um, on the offensive side. You know, the weather was – we're fortunate the weather, weather held off for us and, and we took care of the football like we need to. You know, each week on offense we chart our margin of error, which, you know, there's five – things that we can control and, and today we controlled all five of those uh, unforced errors by not giving up a bunch of sacks, not having a bunch of offensive penalties, no fumbles, no interceptions and, and really I thought the offense did a really good job rallying behind Leah and taking care of the football. Back to the camera. Hey Lots, uh, how's it going? Back here, over here. <laughs> um, you know, I know it's the middle of the season here but this is two straight years now you guys are starting four and one. Uh, you went toe to toe with Michigan last week handled Michigan State this week. Do you feel the vision that you have for this program starting to come to fruition a little bit with the success you guys are having? I see growth out of our team, out of our football family, as to be expected, but I continue to caution. We're not there yet. Um, we still have a lot of work to do, and I do love coaching these this group of guys, man. One of the things that's been, been rewarding and encouraging for me it's just how these guys have really bought into everything we've asked them to do as coaches and the player-led culture. You're starting to see it come to fruition. And so uh, I really enjoy coaching these guys. Um, you know, in year four, this is where we want to be. Um, and now what we've got to do is take it one week at a time and, and really put the work in Monday through Friday. And, and, and good things tend to happen Saturday when you do that. And I think they've embraced that philosophy. Hey, how you doing, Coach? What's up, Josh? So Talia was able to extend several plays on several drives on third down, fourth down. Uh, can you talk about the performance of the offensive line? Yeah, I mean, those guys really kept them upright today. I thought we ran the ball efficiently, you know, at, uh, uh, minus down in the goal line, which and when you get down there, you know, the big fella might have been out of gas a little bit. You know, he had the long run and he seemed to start leaving his feet a little earlier than what he has been doing. And, I sure would have loved to see us finish that drive with a, a, a touchdown there at the end. But the offensive line, as I've said, is the most improved unit on our team. And, you know, the good thing about it, coaching is that you achieve what you emphasize. And to be able to see the things that we emphasize from spring till now and the development of our offensive line really has gave us the ability to have complimentary, a complimentary offense where when we need to run the ball, we can run the ball to go with the passing game that everybody knows we are pretty efficient at. Three more, go back to the cameras. Three more. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Coach. Um, fourth and short.
short in the third quarter, you guys were up 11, you decided to go for it. Were you playing the numbers game there, or was your plan to be a little bit aggressive in those situations? You know, the wind's a factor. Um, our our uh, kicker's kick line, the pooch line becomes, I mean, there's a lot of things that go in, and obviously it's no surprise we do use analytics, and it makes you know something that I study all week long. We get the books in. Um, the win in the fourth quarter becomes a factor, so it is a chess match in there. And, you know, the book kind of gives you a, a pretty good idea of going into it, of when we're going to go for it on fourth down, which allows your play caller. You know, we'll start a drive, and I'll say, hey, Dan, if we get to the plus 40, you're in two-down territory, anything over three yards. Well, we got to one. Um, they said go for it. We had a good call ready to go. So it is some analytics, but I'm not just trusting this book. I'm also putting a little human element on it. And, continue to do so. Hey coach, uh, first few drives in the second half defensively, I think it was a three and a half, three and a half, four play drive in some order. How important is it for the defense to set the tone in the second half and how much pressure does it take off the offense when they're playing like that? Yeah, I mean, our defense, like I said, for the last three games has been lights out in terms of just the adjustments and, you know, we, we give up some cheap yards there uh, in the first half and even, you know, a couple of times just you know, not necessarily being lined up in the communication was an issue early in the game. Uh, as you know, people copycat things that worked against you and you've got to continue to, you know, work to correct the big plays and things that people have done in the past. And our defense, again, in the second half, uh, Brian and those guys have really given them a plan that allows them to go in uh, and play efficient defense, which definitely helps us on offense. Hey coach, it seemed like you guys played really good complimentary football today, you know, keeping us up on the offense, vice versa, especially game two. How does it feel to see all three phases of your team coming together like they did today? Well, we're, we're, in, we're always striving for perfection, and that's why, you know, we always talk about striving for perfection is what makes it really hard, and that's why winning is, we respect winning around here because it is so hard to get 18 to 22 year olds to do it exactly how you ask them to do it with the type of focus necessary. and. You know, we're a work in progress with it. You know, we have four penalties on special teams, and to me, those are just the ones that will keep me up tonight. But I do see the players buying in and really trying to do the things we ask them to do, and that's really all you can ask. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.